everyone, welcome to Friends and Neighbors. I am your host today, Sandra O'Nell, and I am so excited about our guest today. Such a treat. Now, this person is normally behind the scenes, but I am so delighted that we're gonna be able to see him outside in the front of the camera. We have our president of WATC and our producer of Friends and Neighbors, Greg West. Yay! Good to be here, good to be here. You're right, I'd, I'd rather be on the other side of the camera, but it'll be fun. What a treat, it's really fun because you and I tend to chat a lot, just, you know, here and there, I maybe come into your office once in a blue moon. Right, well, you know, <laughs> back in the day when Friends and Neighbors, you know, you know the ladies' room with when it's all the host here. Right. It many times they said the show's in there, not in the studio, because it was so crazy and the <laughs> and everybody was getting ready and everything. Um, so the office has turned into that now. So, but we yeah we have great great conversations and and um, you know long a lot of chats and and wisdom and sharing. And and, that's being shared, yes, yeah. of course. And we love being able, because that's the time that it's a safe haven for sharing myself. And I know Kelly when she's here, and then when we had everybody with us, uh, well, when we had um, Kim as well. Uh -huh. Hilarious. Uh -huh. Whatever happens in the office stays in the office. Right, well, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy. And, and you know, I've, I've been on road trips with the friends and neighbors host. We have not been able to road trip no. with you yet, but we are planning something. I hope so, I yes. hope so. Yes. You know, because because with Friends and Neighbors, you've been in Christian television for quite some time and president of WATC as well. Uh, I've been in Christian TV since 1984. Now, I, I'm not very good at math. Let me see one. <laughs> <laughs> there's, as, as I said before, cut that tree, count the rings. There's a lot of rings. Wait, hold on, let me get my fingers. No. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, I started in 84, but, but mm. really, uh, the foundation, really, when I look back, was actually earlier, as far as, I think, glimpses of what my future was going to be. Isn't that awesome how yeah. God just tills the land mm -hmm. for his plans mm -hmm. for you are perfect? Mm -hmm. I love that. I know um, Sherry's verse is Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you. Mm -hmm. Share with us a little bit as well um, how God tilled that land to bring you here in Christian television. Well, um, I was probably in the third grade, around that age, maybe, maybe fourth, I can't remember for sure. And I bought this book about television history and business. At, a, and at third grade, fourth yeah, grade? Yeah, it was just a, 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 like a paperback book I found yeah. at the drugstore. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I'd like to read about that. And I was just fascinated. It just sparked something I in me. I love that. And so, you know, Remember, this is the 70s and before churches really had cameras in the sanctuaries and all. Right. But I was so like into it, I was producing the church service in my mind. Wow. And, and like a close up of this singer and then this. And I, I honestly remember, I did, not, I did not remember that until I was in Christian TV and revisited my home church. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there and it hit me that I, I had been doing that in the past and I was now doing it for real. Wow. And I, and so that was just like one of those like cool yes. you know aha moments. Yes, you know? I was about to say that. Yeah. Those aha moments that God gives you those little I like to call them those little glimpses of his uh, just his providence uh -huh. in your life. So because I mean who at third grade, fourth grade, what is that, 10, 10 years like old that, or so? Yeah. Like who, you know, unless God is already planting that seed for you to grow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, so, it's really neat. Yeah, because I, even when I, you know, I attended college and, and, and got a degree in communications, uh, they told us one in 10 will find a job in it. And, and I can't say I was looking right at the time for a Christian TV station, but there was a new one coming on the air and I was able to get hired, you know, I was hired. And, um, and it was a great learning experience because a brand new station, you're doing everything. <laughs> And I'm, when I say everything, <laughs> I'm, I mean everything. Um, uh, but it was such a great learning experience. And then I was there, I was there at that station about four years, mm -hmm. moved to South Carolina to uh, a station that's one of the, actually one of the oldest Christian TV stations in the U.S. Wow. And, and Jimmy and Joanne Thompson mm -hmm. were the founders of it. Mm -hmm. I worked for them for many years. And then they had the Atlanta station, um, the permit to start the Atlanta station and then... Oh. Uh, evolved down here. 
I love that. So now, now how does someone get into Christian ministry um, in front of the camera? Like how do you find your guests or how, how does that come about? Well, we're, we're always looking for great testimonies. Mm -hmm. You can never, you know, because a lot of people are not, they'll share their testimony if they're invited, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily calling you to say, I'd like to share my testimony. Right. So we're always looking for great stories uh, that will encourage people. And, and that's, that's, to me as a producer, that's kind of the fun of, of producing is looking for stories that are out there that you, you have, you know, you, mm -hmm. there's somebody that you discover, I guess right. is, is a way to say it. But we work with a lot of publicists. We work with churches and as far as getting guests for programs and, and looking for, um, you know, guests who we think have something to share to encourage somebody or to teach something or, you know, just share some of their life experiences that might help somebody. But that's the thing with Christian TV is it goes into homes at hours that people are, are alone a lot of times and, and, and ministers to someone who's hurting. Right. And that's just the wonderful thing about the, the power of Christian TV and, and how it goes into homes and hospitals and all when maybe people can't. That's right, you know, especially in the environment that we find ourselves in, right. we've got to find ways, creative ways to connect more so. Mm -hmm. I know that we find a lot that um, we've got, you know, um, different churches that are having to rely in media ministry. I guess they call it more media ministry. It, it's evolved in that. I'm, I'm old school. Yeah. I still say television programming, <laughs> but it's really content producing yes. is what it is now because there's so many different platforms, you know, that media can be. Um, uh, exposed to through. Right. And so um, whether it's the social platforms or if it's streaming or over the air like television like we do. Um, but it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful vehicle to get the word out. Right. And, and I have been a part of it, like I said, since 1984. I've seen a lot of changes. But when I came to Atlanta, this was, this was not a station. When I, when we, when I moved here, it, we were still in the uh, planning stages oh, wow. of things. So, so it was a, a lot of chaos. There was only a couple of us here. Uh, Pat Mathis, John Brumall, Vincent Thompson were in the early days. Um, the, we were here trying to get the, you know, get the station started. And the, you, you know, you kind of see where your past experiences prepare you for, for mm -hmm. the new things yeah. that you're facing. Yes. So, you know, having been at the Burlington station and the startup, yeah. having, having worked in advertising in an ad agency during some of this period of time, all of those skill sets, you know, really came together to, right. to help launch the station. And so um, it was just, you know, again, wearing a lot of hats. I imagine so. And then how, when you guys got things ready here at WATC, and do you remember your first show? I, I remember uh, the Atlanta. We did Atlanta Live, which yes. is our flagship program at WATC. When we when we launched that, about six months or so after, we, well, about eight months after we signed on the air, it was a, it was about eight month difference. Um, we did it at a studio up in Woodstock, Georgia, and and not at the facility that we're at now. Okay. It was near our transmitter site. Okay. And. I was at a convention, so I really wasn't here for the first live programs, but I called back to check on what happened, and it sounded like it just went in every direction. You know, it was like- Especially so, if it's live. Yes, it right? was like, you know, we didn't, we didn't take, we didn't try pilots, we didn't <laughs> do test runs, we just, you know, we just went for it. Yeah. And so, and then I, when we moved here to the studio that it's done in now, again, no rehearsals, you know, we just started booking guests and, you know, having the first show. And, and again, you know, there's a learning curve to it, but you have to start somewhere. You, you do, know, you, you have, have to, to start right, somewhere. But then, you, can plan, you can plan this forever and keep moving it back because it's not right, it's not perfect. That's right. And you just have to go for it. So we evolve, people could watch us evolve. Well, but. And I love your heart, uh, Greg, because you know, you just said something that resonates in my heart um, and what I've done is like, you can plan, you, you need to be diligent in your planning. You want to provide as much excellence as you can, mm -hmm. but you can plan things out so to the minute minute that you plan out the Holy Spirit and what is 
organic and what can happen mm -hmm. out. And that's what God wanted it to be, mm -hmm. or that's what will really encourage the viewers at mm -hmm. that point, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, um, um, you know, you want to have a plan for the program, but you also want to be able to evolve it if the Holy Spirit takes it in a different direction. And I've seen that. You know. I've experienced that here at Friends and Neighbors mm -hmm. and at Atlanta Live. And I think that is really what is part of that heartbeat or the heartbeat of the, the shows that you've produced. Now, with Friends and Neighbors, I know that we're coming up at almost at a thousand episodes, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's pretty exciting. Uh-huh. You, you see this gray right here? <laughs> That's like a little bit of Sandra, uh, a little bit of Sarah, a little bit of Donna, a lot of kids, a lot of Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I joke. It, I, you know, I, I have loved working with the ladies. Um, uh, the, really, when Friends and Neighbors started, it was to be our public affairs program mm. here at WATC and not so ministry oriented mm -hmm. because we needed to do it for our license for the station. But... I didn't want just a one-on-one -on -one interview. I wanted to, you know, the view had just started. So I guess, you know, I've kind of barred the idea of bringing different women together to, right. to do a more of a, so it's Can more of a, so it was more of a conversational format. Yes. So, so then a, just a one-on-one -on -one typically. And so I had met three women along the way and I, and I, as I was trying to brainstorm and it was like, you know, who should I and try to invite to be a part of it? And I wrote three names down. And those three ladies all said yes. Ooh, I love that. And so they, I could not get them together to even do like a meeting to the three of them to meet each other prior to the taping day. Oh my goodness. Two of them were able to meet, but the third couldn't. I can't remember who couldn't. But um, that's a producer's nightmare. You know, like <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ready to produce a show yeah. and, and the host have it. Meeting. Yeah, and then you know, you just don't know about the chemistry. <laughs> right. Because this was a very good. This is going to be a very chemistry-driven thing. Right. After this, the, we taped one program where I put everybody in different segments so they could just learn the rhythm. Right. Again, no pilots, no rehearsals. We're going for it. Yes. You know? And and so what happened was um, they took a lunch break after they, they they all did their one segment. It was a three-segment program. They all did a segment by themselves yeah. just to get the rhythm. Sure. They broke for lunch, and by the time they came out of the ladies' room. They had bonded, and, oh. and it was like you saw it in the second program, which was the first one they actually had to be together and together. interact with each mm -hmm. other. I love that. But see, that's the freedom that you give to be able to connect people. And then you're able to also connect with the viewership and also the community, because really we're there to help inspire, educate. And also, I mean, we're growing in the program together. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that I jumped into your office one day and I was, I love how you kind of hang in there with me until I get to my point. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Because I'm like, I'm almost there. But remember that one time I said, Craig, don't worry. Two is better than one. So, see, right now, two yeah. here on the set is better, than, better one. than one. And yeah. we've got to take a small commercial break. But remember, come back because two is better than one, especially here at Friends <laughs> and Neighbors. We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors, and we are having a delightful conversation with the producer of Friends and Neighbors, as well as president of WATC TV 57 here in Atlanta. Greg, it's so wonderful to have you in the front of the camera. I know you don't like that. I don't. I don't. I, there, that's why I, I look for people <laughs> like you who, who, who are natural on camera. I'm not natural on camera, but, um, but you know, I'm also willing to serve in any way I can. Well, and no, especially when I'm like, Greg, please come on the program. I want to talk and I want to reminisce yeah. about friends and neighbors and just God's faithfulness in Christian television. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what we're talking about mm -hmm. and how he has kind of interwoven um, and just weaves our paths, crosses them um, together. Um, in the beginning of the segment, we were talking about how the girls got together and how the chemistry really just bonded after mm -hmm. they did I mean it, it was 
it, those were the names. I love it. You know, the it's Lord God had given just, me. I love that. And you were obedient mm -hmm. to call on them. And that's really where the blessing comes, right, mm -hmm. Greg? And I'm sure you have seen the fruits of that obedience in your life mm -hmm. with different uh, people that have come on the program or different shows. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear all about that. Well, you know, it's, it's really interesting, you know, with the friends and neighbors, um, ladies, uh, the, 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 that second program, I, I, I just knew yes. that the, this, these were the three who were to do it. And then probably 10 years into it, uh, uh, and, and let me say they were, they drifted away, moved away, but they would still con continue to come back to do the mm -hmm. program. I mean, I, I have to thank them for their dedication to the program. And, um, so about 10 years into it, Kim felt like it was time for her to move to the next chapter of her life. So Kelly came on board, and 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 Kelly is hilarious, hilarious oh my and goodness, just a joy. I love her. And and so and she was the one that was supposed to fill the spot because it we it didn't miss a beat. I love that. And then then you know we were we were talking. I don't exactly remember all the path of of how we connected, except I can take us back a number of years before you became part of WATC. And I was in the uh, uh, sanctuary at First Baptist Atlanta. And I remember you had a special solo number that you did. And you know how the big screen puts your name on the screen right, and everything. Yeah. I wrote it, I, you know, on the, on the bulletin, I wrote it down because I thought, I need to invite, of course, I would have said Sandra. Right. <laughs> well, and that's hilarious, our conversation about Sandra, Sandra, which uh -huh. is another story. So, so um, I wrote your name down because <laughs> I thought, I need to look into trying to invite you to the station. But then, you know, it, it gets buried on my desk. Right. It doesn't happen at that time. But our paths do finally connect. That's right. And That's so, right. And it's really neat because it's when God, it's in God's perfect timing yeah. that that happened. And it was very organic even uh, how we met. I mean, I remember how a Babby is, who is a staple here, uh -huh. uh, who's a wonderful, she's my mentor. And mm -hmm. when I decided to step out in my, in faith of my new album um, so many years ago, she was my encourager, the one that said, Sandra, this is what, I, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to link hands with you. So it was really neat. And then mm -hmm. how she then connected me to WATC and then to mm -hmm. you. Right. I have a really a neat Babby story. Um, when I was working at the Greenville, South Carolina station, um, I was booking guests. I was directing, but I was also doing some booking. And we would use Babby. Babby had been there She's years amazing. before. Oh and, and, and we would use her tape music mm -hmm. in time, sometimes in the live program. And an all rise and yes. all, you know, just, I loved Babby's music. And I kept thinking, I would love to get Babby back here to the station. So I reached out and I talked to the assistant. And they said, well, when we're in the area, we'll try to come by and tape something. Yeah. So they were doing a Sunday night. So they said, the assistant called me, said, if you can tape something Monday morning, you know, we can do it. I said, oh yeah. She said, well, be sure to bring some donuts. I said, I can handle the donuts. <laughs> I, I will. That. I will. I will get the donut. I want to know what kind. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> All I can tell you is Duncan, but other than that, um, um, uh, knowing me though, it was a mix. You know. <laughs> anyway, um, I stopped to get the donuts that morning, and then the car wouldn't start. And so, but someone from the station, the place was close enough. Someone from the station saw me. Yeah. I said, here, take the donuts, tape the stuff. You know, make sure it gets recorded. Right. I got to work on getting the car. So I didn't get to meet Babby except as we were walking in and out the door. Oh my goodness. But they had autographed my donut box oh. to thank me for the donuts. <laughs> and so I, in my, I had an office in Greenville. I tore it, the lid of it off where they signed it and put it on my bulletin board. But who would have thought at that point that the, the journey would take us to where we would work on Babby's house together. Oh my goodness. You know, it's really. And it's you're a producer of Babby's house as well. So, right. and that's been going on for. It started just a couple of months after Friends started. Yeah. So they're both in. They're all yeah. kind of in tandem. And, uh -huh. and but all of it started in 98. Oh my goodness. Yeah, 1998. I tell you, God's faithfulness and everything. You know, I want to hear some funny stories about the girls. Now, since I'm by myself today, uh -huh. you know, friendless uh -huh. and friends and neighbors. Uh -huh. Well, remember, two is better than one. <laughs> because, though. yes, two is better than one. Uh, Very profound. Let right. that simmer. Let that really simmer. Right, right. Um, yeah, I can talk about them, right? I can talk about them a little bit. Um, well, Nobody I, will know. I told you how, you know, obviously, that, you know, the, I, 
that the show was half the time in the ladies' room because of all the, you could hear the laughing and the and the cackles, and you yeah. knew that everybody was in there. Um, I could tell as each each host arrived because the the decibel level would get increase. louder, you know. Um, uh, so, um, but you know, we we did a road trip. Um, uh, this was with Kelly and and uh, Sherry and Donna. And we went to Charlotte to um, celebrate our 500th episode. And, oh. and we were going to work with Samaritan's Feet to do um, shoe giveaway to the needy and foot washing and serve. And so we, it was a wonderful event. It was the perfect thing. Kelly came, said we should do that, and it was perfect. So we went to eat that night. Mm -hmm. And we are in Sherry's convertible. <laughs> And so I'm driving it. The top is down. I'm driving back to the hotel because we're in North Carolina for this. Um, and I'm driving, and all of a sudden, I'm on an interstate, and I see this big flash. And, and I'm thinking, what was that? And what Kelly was doing is her hair was blowing, so she said it's like an Herbal Essence commercial. <laughs> she was taking pictures of herself in the back. I can see Kelly. Because her doing. hair, because she said it's pulling the skin back. I and love so it. And so then Donna started getting into yeah. it. Well, Sherry got jealous. <laughs> Because she wasn't in the she back seat. To get in the picture. So here she's crawling to get back as I'm driving the convertible. She's crawling to get back into the back seat so she can be part of the pictures as well. Oh and goodness. so, um, yeah, you just have to hold on for the ride on, on is, things like that. Oh my goodness! Yes, yes. And so, um, uh, but it, what a great, what a fun memory. It is. It's a know. fun memory and such a wonderful memory of Donna too. We didn't, mm -hmm. you know, she was really a staple here as well. Her yes. heartbeat. Oh yes. I never got to meet her personally. Right. But I can, I sensed it uh -huh. through the uh, different episodes and, and her beautiful voice, her uh -huh. beautiful countenance. So I'm really grateful to be a part of the show and I'm grateful that God brought us all together. Yes. And I'm really looking forward to the next, the future. Sure. Because there's still wonderful things that are going to happen in Christian television. Um, you know, God works all things for good for those who love him. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm looking forward to growing. To, I mean, I feel like every day, Greg, I'm like, I'm trying to understand so I'm so happy that you're bringing in guests that help well you know that I, I, you know that's the beauty of it is you know we don't overproduce the program you know it's we don't we give you some suggested questions maybe or something but right. it really comes from what makes this work I think is because it's very conversational yes it's it, it's like you're asking the questions that you want to know which is really what other people want to know right and and I think I think that's what makes it work it's not so card driven Scripted. that you have to ask this question I think it, it again the, the word organic comes out yes and I think the chemistry also between Sherry and I and I know Kelly's also going to be coming back and doing some more episodes with us but I mean we're all so different uh, but really have the same um, thread of really wanting to know and do what's better mm -hmm. and what's good within our community right and be the good you know that's been really resonating in my heart. It's just be the good, mm -hmm. be the good in your environment. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't only have to happen here on television where you all broadcast it out, but within your, um, your, 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 your level, your, 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 day to, your day to day, your day to day. That's right. Absolutely. And, and so, so, I mean, I love that. And I love the fact, Greg, yes. that you're constantly available to Sherry and I and Kelly <laughs> to just, you know, sometimes we come in there and we're just like, Whoo! <laughs> just yeah. give you no filter. We just mm -hmm. It's all about what's mm -hmm. what happens that mm -hmm. particular day. Yeah. But anyway, we will be coming back. We're taking another break. Why does this go by so quickly? I don't know. It is yeah, going I feel by like fast. I'm going to have another like on-air session, and you guys are going to watch it. <laughs> Maybe not. But anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors, and I hope that you have been encouraged and have gotten to see a little bit of behind the scenes and the history of Christian television, how, how it can look like, Greg. Um, I really have enjoyed this time together. It's been fun. And, you know, it's been interesting because every time I walk into your office, there uh -huh. is a Sandra soundbite, isn't there? Yeah, Whatever there, it may be. Yes, it, you, uh, you usually have a good comment, <laughs> but you can hang your hat on. That was the discussion for this meeting. But, <laughs> no. but, um, but that's what's wonderful is that the ladies are also different and you're all 
but yet you complement each other, and that's been fun to work with. And, you know, I think the journey for Christian TV is just going to continue, and we're just going to hang on for the ride. I love that. You know, that's one of my other things that I always say. It's always awesome to be right in the, um, it's kind of like in the, um, coattail of God. I, it's just, you're right there. It's mm -hmm. a fun ride, but you're right in the middle of his coattail. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be safe. Uh -huh. um, and I love that. And I love the fact that we can come to you and I can come in and say, Greg, two is better than that's, one. That's and you're right. like, what are you talking about? Yes, yes. But you always listen. So I, I, well, I try. This I little try. therapy session that I have <laughs> with you. But I am grateful. Thank you for being here. And thank you for just uh, sharing your yes. time with us. And thank you for joining us. I do pray that this time has giving you encouragement. Know that you don't know where your journey is going, but God knows. So hold on tight because you know what? It's going to be a fun ride and things are going to be better. Things are going to be brighter. So there's always hope. We'll see you next time on Friends and Neighbors.